Hello and welcome to the official 48 Hours podcast. 48 Hours is a filmmaking competition run over a single weekend in New Zealand every year where teams have only 48 hours to write, shoot and edit a short film while also including some random compulsory elements. On today's episode, David Searle of T-Volk will be interviewing Alexander AJ Jones and Chelsea Liddy of Team Le Cousins Dangereux. Alexander was involved in a few teams over the years before forming Le Cousins in 2013 with their first short film Bourbon Legends, a crime film where a group of drunk friends recount the life of Vic Meyer, a high school chum cum drug lord. Despite solid reviews, the film was unsuccessful in the competition. Le Cousins returned in 2014 with a romantic comedy, Something New, which went on to come runner-up in Christchurch as well as taking home numerous other awards on the night. They made regional finals again in 2015 and 2017, this year taking out runner-up with their alien film Not Again, a film about a man who was abducted and probed by aliens who has to convince everyone that he didn't stick something up his butt. Let's see what AJ and Chelsea have to say. Hello everyone, it's David here from T-Belk. Today I'm introducing Chelsea, uh, the producer of Le Cousin Dangereux, and AJ, the writer, sometime director, and team leader. Hello. Hi. How are you guys doing? Good, good. thank you. Good. Uh, how did it go this week? Uh, this weekend? This year? <laughs> this year's weekend? Uh, yeah, I think um, it certainly got off to a rocky start, and mm. uh, we certainly weren't feeling confident at any point uh, until maybe like the end of filming when we started editing, which is, I mean, mm. I guess that's with a lot of people's films probably. <laughs> <laughs> they probably don't know what it looks like till they start editing it. Or a couple of days later. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, okay, if, if, if we're going to look at the weekend, mm-hmm. let's just kick straight into it. Mm-hmm. What is 48 hours to you guys? Um, to, yeah, to me, it's just a, a really fun weekend. Haven't been involved for the last two, uh, two years, so coming back into this one, it was just. It's a really fun opportunity to watch people work creatively. Like that's not my strong suit. Organisation probably is, but um, yeah, I just really love watching it all come together. It's just a fascinating process. It's very um, at the same time. It, 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 like two times, it's like the best thing and the worst thing because it's like the best thing because I look forward to it every year and it's like everyone working together because they want to, not because I've asked them to. But then at the same time, it can often be the only thing you make. In, in the whole year and then it, it's like what am I doing <laughs> Amen <laughs> uh, So how, how do you structure the weekend because you get the elements for anybody who hasn't been a part of 48 hours you get the elements at 7pm on the Friday and you have to write shoot cut have a massive breakdown and deliver <laughs> a film by 7pm mm-hmm. on the Sunday so how do you guys structure the weekend so uh we'll go to the launch uh we'll come back and then it's everyone and we have a big team we have have around 20-ish people each year in our team (laughs) (laughs) um which which sometimes works doesn't work that well but it's cool it's cool I I like the 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 atmosphere of having everyone having fun um so initially we'll have like a no holds barred everyone this is what we're doing you know who's got an idea and then slowly we'll like whittle people away till it's like the essentials writing the story yeah and then so after that we'll hopefully get to sleep uh at some time on the uh sunday saturday morning (laughs) and then we usually get up pretty early Mm. and yeah go go we do all of um so film all of saturday start editing saturday night and the last the last three years we've had we've split editing up into two Mm -hmm. so we'll have two editors one edits one half one edits the other the other half so that that has worked and uh like i think it worked really well this year because um garrett and i who's our director and also editor me and him are very similar editors and previous years i think there's been a bit of difference between the editing so there is a there is a you can tell that there especially um apocalypse 2k15 i feel you can there's a distinct change halfway through Uh, there is (laughs) chelsea with with 20 people on the team you're the producer uh so you're responsible for wrangling Mm. 20 cats yeah it's i found this year quite a difficult one from that perspective actually i feel like in previous years we've utilized a lot of people you know i think especially bourbon legends we had so many different locations and there were so many different scenes we were shooting that i had a really good idea of okay i need this person to go get that i need this person to go check that's available all that kind of stuff whereas this year i feel like we were very restrained with one location Mm -hmm. and we were only allowed 10 people at that location and so I found it really hard to kind of make sure that everybody in the team kind of had a role had something to do so I found that quite hard this year Um, a lot of people who 
perhaps weren't as involved as they wanted to be and so it was just making sure that we basically had the key things covered but I couldn't really look past that I think. To, to my knowledge this is the first year out of five though that we've had people feeling left out which yeah. I think is pretty good when you've got yeah, that yeah. many million people. Well yeah. it's the trick really isn't it because mm. you've got to have every, every base covered mm. but you don't want people to feel like they're not able to mm. do their thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talking about Bourbon Legends because that was your first film? That was so that was our first La Cousins film mm. I'd been doing it for four years before I thought so it was my fifth 48 hour film but first as Le Cousins mm. that was a very intense in terms of just the production side of mm. it you've got so many different locations mm-hmm. you've got a rapidly aging AJ <laughs> uh, losing all sorts of facial hair yeah. and, and hair yeah. how did you structure that shoot? do you remember? <laughs> yeah I'm trying to I... I remember saying to you in the car um, when I when you were telling me the, the what scenes we were going to do first mm-hmm. and me being like wait, I've got to have hair at that point. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I remember the look on your face just being like, oh, it was like seven in the morning. <laughs> just like this, oh, yeah. And then yeah. <laughs> having to like restructure things like I that. I think the good thing with that one, I remember we had quite a strong story quite early yeah, on man. from yeah. memory. And so I was already thinking, okay, where are we going to do that? Where are we going to do that? I had a sort of run sheet going, which I didn't have this year because it was very different in terms of getting the story. So yeah, I had a run sheet and I just remember we were sorting costumes and locations from like maybe 11 o'clock that night Mm. or something and just went right through and then woke up really early and had yeah about three different cars going different places (laughs) from memory and (laughs) getting things ready and scouting places like it was that was the first 48 hour film that I did that we moved off home base to do mm-hmm. like the ones I'd done before that they were all in my friend's backyard that sort of thing yep. mm. and then this was the first one that we were, we were run like we went to Littleton to, yeah. to the mm. movie theatre to like all these different places yeah. and I remember thinking like this is way better yeah. than, than filming <laughs> it, in the backyard. It was a lot of fun it was, you know I remember driving back from Littleton trying to get to the movies and we had a set time we had to get to the <laughs> movies and yeah it was just amazing it was great. One of my favourite Le Cousins images full stop is AJ as a Colombian drug lord. <laughs> <laughs> and I was one of your ladies. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that was funny because I remember um, we were writing the drug lord stuff and one of the girls who was on our team was like, I want to be your girlfriend. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So I wrote like, he has a girl like hanging off his arm. And then... Because because I'm always because I because you can see in the credits I'm the writer for that and so I'm worried people like watch it be like did he just write all I'm like write his, myself in yeah. again <laughs> and so we had um it just escalated through like the other people directing it and like to to be <laughs> four no, four no one's friends. blaming you <laughs> so the following year you had what. I think pretty much is the sweetest rom-com in 48 hours, <laughs> certainly you. and crushed it. W- walk us through that process of how do you, because it's such a fantastic concept, you've got, it's largely in one location with mm-hmm. some flashbacks, mm-hmm. uh, and you've got, you're starting right off from after the wedding, which mm-hmm. is a very un-rom-com yeah. position to take. So h- how did you sort of come to that point? That was my third rom-com. Oh, Jesus. I was like, by that point, we got rom-com and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Um And we we were spitballing ideas for ages and I think like a very early precursor to something new, which if you haven't seen, by the way, is about a, a couple of newlyweds who are scared about having sex for the first time. The like precursor idea to that was a first kiss. Like it was gonna, we, were, we had toned it down heaps. <laughs> and I, I remember one of <laughs> this idea I was set on. And this is great. Um, this is a great example of why I shouldn't be the only person in charge. <laughs> um, was one of the ideas I was set on was like she kisses him and then he just vomits on her. Like it'll be hilarious. Like it'll be so shocking. People will love it. And everyone in that room was like no. no. And I was like I was like you don't get it you don't see my vision um but no i'm glad we didn't and then someone someone suggested (laughs) doing it as yeah as as a married couple having sex for the first time very much as a joke Mm. like it was like oh what if it was the first time having sex and we were like ha 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 so we threw it away we're like yeah as if we're gonna do that and then like an hour later we hadn't didn't have anything Mm. and i i walked out of the room and i was just like and I came back, I was like, we have to do the sex one. It's the, it's the, only, <laughs> it's the only one I care about. And I was like, here's, we'll, we'll do it tastefully. We yep. won't say the word sex. We yep. won't make it uh, sexual or sexy. We'll, we'll make it like sweet and, and, and emotional. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how that sort of came up with 
and like and then i remember writing that and i finished that at like 3 a.m and my heart was pounding from like three v's that i'd had and i went to bed and i was like holy shit like this is the best thing i've ever written <laughs> that's how i felt when, when i wrote that so it was, it was cool to see that come to land and do as do as well as it did i think as well was to really really yeah. validated well, I, th- I think there's a pretty fair argument to say that you know you could well have won if it wasn't for uh a certain other team who oh, well, I, I, also got rom com. I certainly oh <laughs> rom com. Yeah, I, I am completely biased, but I couldn't choose between them, so I don't envy oh, the judges just... there. Oh, now, Chelsea, you hmm. weren't involved in Apocalypse or hashtag Apocalypse Two K Fifteen. No, I wasn't. <laughs> Tell me what you think of it, because you've been part of the team. Mm. and I know it's not one of AJ's favourites. Mm-hmm. I quite like it. Mm. So you know how the team works and, and their strengths and weaknesses from, mm. from inside, but you weren't involved, so give us a rundown of that film. I like the pace of it. It's quick. I felt like I could definitely tell that certain people weren't involved, like which I actually really love because it shows you how much people put their stamp on mm. something that they're totally. involved with. Like yeah. I really liked the job that Benny did. I thought she was a good actress in that role. I think you could tell that there was a difference, but I think that it's still kept with the tone of our team yeah, I could see it was a Le Cousins film. I enjoyed seeing that, seeing the development come through. It was I, one of the notes I, I made while watching it again tonight was, where do you find all the corpses? But now that I know that you've got twenty <laughs> odd people, that yeah. <laughs> what are the what are the reviews um, that we got for that film? Like pissed me off to no end, and it was like because the first line in the film was the worst thing about the end of the world is the smell. And when I came up with that one, I was like, brilliant. I'm a genius. What a great line. And then uh, one of the like main lines in, in one of our reviews was like, why is there a bad smell if the bodies aren't rotting? And I was like, no, you're right. But- <laughs> <laughs> those, those reviewers, if you're serious about improving uh, your film's audience land, uh, get on and actually have a good look at the reviews that yeah. you do get because they might piss you off big time. Mm. But as long as they're not sort of vengeful, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're actually trying to help. And yeah, for sure. Certainly as a team, we take on board very heavily what, what reviewers do of our films, uh, particularly the reviewers that we know, like Mr. Tears. Mm. Uh, I think Scott and Gene DeCanter, mm. he does some fantastic reviews for other teams. And so mm. if you take that constructive criticism on board, I think it, it really helps. And yeah, that was very good criticism. <laughs> Yeah, I, the, the other line that, that irked me on that was who's she narrating to? So if, if you haven't seen this, it's a, it's a last person on earth film about like a selfie queen who's the last person on earth and she narrates it. And one of the notes was who's she narrating to? And I was so furious at that because I was like, Desperate Housewives is narrated by a dead character. Like it's a narrative device. She doesn't. She's not talking to anyone. Anyway, sorry. This isn't this isn't a platform to me to me to rant to the to the reviews. Oh, no, no. We it's a platform, AJ, for you to to, to rant. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, actually, if, if we move on to last year's one, mm-hmm. <laughs> explain what you mean by that sound effect. Last year's one was what happens when um, I'm two years without my usual team and I get a little bit too big for my boots and think that I'm unstoppable. That's what last year's one was. And guess what? It was stoppable. It was very stoppable. Some lovely little performances in there, though. I mean, Elliot uh, was fantastic. My analysis of A Time and a Place is that it's a well-acted, very boring film. Like it's the the performances are fine, but it's just so no. It's a time travel movie where you see no time travel, like which sounds like real avant garde and interesting, but it's not. If you haven't seen it, I assure you, it's not interesting. Well, no, you've you've got the elements of a good story. I mean, you've got good characters. Sure, you've got a character who changes by the end of it, mm-hmm. but there's no action. Mm. Yeah, you're, you're sitting around. It, it's basically a, a five minute AA meeting for time mm-hmm. travels. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is such a ugh. um. So okay. <laughs> What, what, with, and like in a, in a broader scope looking at our team, what we do really well is uh, like comebacks. <laughs> so, so Bourbon Legends d- didn't get into the finals, didn't get recognized because of a like editing glitch in it that we didn't know was there till after we came back and looked at it. Mm. And then the next year we got runner up in Christchurch, you know, and then, then the next year um, we lost half our key members and I was real nervous. And so we went with the first idea that we had, which is what we got. Um, and that's sort of why I, not not too big of a fan of, of apocalypse is because it's I, I thought of a better idea 
on Monday, you know, mm. like, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> and then, <laughs> then, uh, a time and a place was like me, yeah, but being, being too big for my britches. And then it was such a massive failure that, well, in my eyes anyway, that, that like, it caused me to like really rethink what is a 48 hour film? What is a film? What is a story? And I think like, if you look at the film we made this year, which, which I'm really proud of, um, I think that we wouldn't have made that if we hadn't made a time and a place. I wouldn't have realised you need an adventure in a story for it to be interesting. Because in my mind it was like, yeah, we've done, we did two films that are people sitting around in rooms talking and people loved them. Mm. So I was like, yeah, let's just do that again. Mm. And yeah, no, you need adventure. You need, you need people to be moving in your film for it to be good. Mm. Okay, so this year's film, Mm -hmm. uh, I think I've seen more of your ass, AJ, than I expected I ever would. Mm, Me too. Uh, Because, you know, I never see it because it's (laughs) behind (laughs) me. That's why they invented mirrors. Yeah. Uh, That seemed to be a theme of ours. Yeah, yeah. This is the second (laughs) gratuitous butt shot Mm. we've had. Mm. This wasn't as gratuitous, the butt shot. It's more like a, a like butt a, tease. We yeah. could have gone further. We, when we were editing it, because I was like, whatever, I'll show my butt on camera. Who cares? And But then when we were editing it, I was like, hey, how about we only show the butt if it makes sense in, in the context of what you're seeing? <laughs> like, if you can cut away from the butt, why not? And we're like, yeah, okay, that's probably a better idea. So. <laughs> can we please advertise this podcast as the one that says we'll only show the butt if it makes sense? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think that's our new new slogan for it. So, Chelsea, mm. with that one, you said you could only have 10 people on set for, yep. for obvious reasons uh, if you've seen the film. Who did you choose? I mean, who was cut and how did you cut them? And so <laughs> what roles did you prioritise there? Um, we'd already decided who was acting our roles, so we knew we needed to take them, and we needed three extras, I think it was, so... We sort of just had people around that morning, and I think we just. Mm. It wasn't so much that we needed three extras; it was there was three spaces left, so we had seven essential crew, right. and then we're like, "Sweet, let's yeah. get let's get three more, mm-hmm. yeah. just for anything, you know, yeah, you know, walking around or." Yeah, we had sound photography director me, and then we knew we had two main actors. We had quite a strict time limit as well; we had to be out of there by a certain time so we were definitely trying so, to oh my gosh. keep to time and just do what we needed to do when as I, soon as we could do it when i'd, I'd relinquished um role of director in favor of acting it by that point and i'm lying there in the hospital bed and i know we've got two and a half hours left and we've got most of the movie to shoot and mm. i was like i just can't mentally afford to think about this like i have to let the person who's gonna have to think about that think about it so that i can just relax mm. and not like freak out mm. but i mean we got it i think we yeah. we were pushing it but yeah yeah we got there trying to keep people on track it was very much alex and garrett seemed confident that we were on track in terms of i was struggling to remember sort of by this stage last year were we <laughs> wanting to be further <laughs> further along in shooting we and but everyone was pretty relaxed actually surprisingly mm. and so it was it was nice actually it was a nice pace of shooting that day actually for anyone out there who doesn't understand the role of producer that mm. could include a number of producers to be fair <laughs> <laughs> chelsea could you explain it to me like i'm five years old um i mean to be honest i don't know if i formally do what a producer is supposed to be doing <laughs> i think i came on board basically because we needed someone who was could be sort of objective and could stand back and check that everything was going smoothly to me the role is to keep everybody on track to keep an eye on the things that nobody really wants to think about especially this year health and safety (laughs) um (laughs) just yeah just making sure that we were being logical and sensible yeah and just looking into the logistics I feel like I answered the same question about four times that week (laughs) just everybody asks you for those little details so it's your job to be on track of the little details the formalities yeah managing people delegating roles making sure somebody's looking after food you know not taking care of all of that stuff yourself necessarily but just making sure that somebody is doing it making sure that everybody's happy and knows what they're doing I guess Chelsea's our secret weapon because (laughs) without her it would be me producing and then we're not going to get any food. No one's going to get anywhere on time. Um, well, I mean, like I say we we've had um, we had like someone step in as producer for mm. Apocalypse in a time and a place, and they they did great. But yeah, yeah, it's Kelsey's definitely, definitely like our secret weapon. It's definitely not a role you can neglect. Thinking mm. I can, you know, I can just handle those few things that are essential, and then the rest will just sort itself out. I think that's the key. Remembering that it's not going to sort itself out. There is always someone behind mm. those things that help on the on the weekend. 
You can't fix everything in post. No. <laughs> you can't fix broken hearts in post. <laughs> so this year was a little bit different. Mm-hmm. You didn't do Ultra. No. No. Well, technically we don't qualify because this is only our fifth film. So we'd only done it for four you, years. You had done four years before that. Yes. You could have qualified. I could have. And I was, talk- <laughs> I was talking to them about it. Um, and I talked to our team. And initially I was like, yeah, let's do it. Mm. And then... Um, I put the word out to my team and Chelsea in particular and like you know it was a good good I'm glad she did mm-hmm. um, was like no basically, basically I um, think I said please no um, <laughs> a lot a lot of the people who had just joined or have like um, sort of not not as as key roles were like yeah let's do it and but everyone when Chelsea said no it was basically like sweet no then. but I, th- I think part of it it could have been selfish reasons but I was thinking you know I haven't been involved the last two years I'm really keen to see what we can do again under normal circumstances, if that makes sense. Like I knew we had a couple of, well, it was just me and Garrett coming back, I think. Uh, you, yeah, as key, yeah, as key members, we had like Christy and Michael coming back. Yeah, we had a few key members coming back and I was just really interested to see what we could do. I felt confident that we could get back to the something new level mm. if we gave it a really good shot under the same circumstances. So well, th- that was my reasoning. You have. Yeah, it, it, it's I think probably the best film you've made so far. It's interesting. It's very interesting. But <laughs> if you did do Ultra, I yeah. think I've got a fairly good idea what you would have done. Okay, what was it? Tell me what I would have done. It, it would have been Bourbon Legends too. Yeah, it would have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, in the first person shooter type. Oh yeah. Action. Interesting. Um, well, because we got Alien, so I, I it wasn't until last night that I actually considered like if we'd done Ultra and got a different genre, what would we have done? Mm. I feel like we 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 have the benefit of having like our first two films were both drastically different in tone, and so for that, if we have to do a sequel, we can do a sequel to Bourbon Legends under any genre. Mm. Like it doesn't because it's not it's not serious. It's oh, silly. Please, Bourbon Legends <laughs> to the musical. <laughs> These, these are your, these are all ideas an that we've had, um, and yeah. So like, I think the idea that I sort of came up with in the back of my mind after after the weekend was like doing Vic Meyer from uh, Bourbon Legends gets abducted by aliens, and it's the same. It's the same people sitting around talking about him and the, them getting drunker, and the same, basically the same film, but giving allowing us to give Bourbon Legends like a second <laughs> life because it was it was so like ignored when it when it first happened. So it was like a chance for us to you know not really a chance because this is all looking back in retrospect but um <laughs> i would have loved to do um a sequel to, to something new yeah. but not with alien <laughs> no <laughs> so yeah mm. no I'm, I'm glad i think not again is the the fir- it's the first time that i've thought of other ideas after the weekend that i haven't thought they were better mm. like or well, first time since something new so both apocalypse and a time and a place on Monday, I've been like, this is a way better idea. I wish I thought of this. But with Not Again, yeah, I've th- I thought of other ideas, but I feel like they wouldn't be better. So that's cool. It took a while to land on Let's Do a Film About Anal Probing. Because I think <laughs> I think for me, one thing that I always try to avoid and, and never manage to each year is um, doing what everyone else is doing. So like yeah. this year, the Wilhelm scream was everyone's ringtone, which we did as well thinking it was a, an innovative way of using it. Same. Yeah. <laughs> my, my thoughts were like, everyone's going to do um, illegal aliens. They're going to spin it and do mm-hmm. it about like illegal aliens. Mm-hmm. Or they're going to do anal probe. Like everyone's thinking of doing anal probe. I haven't seen one other anal probe yeah. alien, alien <laughs> movie in the competition this year. Nice save. <laughs> Can I just say, I, I think the story writing process, it was about 1 a.m., I went home to try mm. and get some sleep because I just thought I can't help anymore. There's nothing I can do. Mm. I was literally getting out of my car to go home and I got a call from Alex and Garrett and they said, we've got it. <laughs> we're doing anal pro. <laughs> and I just, I honestly thought they were joking. It's like, <laughs> they're overtired. They're just, they've gone. I think that's, we were crazy. overtired. That, yeah. that was the beauty of it. Was But it was a good sort of five minutes of them pitching to me. <laughs> okay, this is, this is where we're going. So yeah. And like at the start of the night, I'd put up a, um, I put up my Venn diagram on the wall of like what what needs to be in a good film right so that's that's adventure as i mentioned before um humor and heart basically like these three things will make like a great film and then like halfway through i think it was either saturday or sunday one of the team members was like hey aj so how does this one fit into heart and i was like (laughs) it doesn't (laughs) but i don't know it it does it does okay i mean he he doesn't run away Yeah. yeah There you go. He goes back. I'm glad. I'm glad that people find the heart in it. Then, <laughs> <laughs> both of you mm-hmm. and independently, 
Uh, what do you want to achieve with your films? I mean, why do you make films in, in, in forty eight hours? Like, I mean, we all have the the fantasy of taking taking out the big award, and, and like, you know, I would be lying if I said I only did it for the fun weekend. <laughs> so I do, it, yeah, I do it because it's a it's the more years I've done it, the more I've worked out how to analyze what is good and what is bad through trial and error of course through making bad films and you know, I've, I've worked that out and so for me it's like another each year is like another chance to like build on what we did last year even if, if it's like a drastically different story I think for me it's just seeing all these people that I admire creatively and have seen what they do in other contexts seeing what they do under this environment under the time pressure yeah to me I just genuinely love being on the other end of it and seeing what we've come up with and especially I think our team I love looking back and seeing how different our films are (laughs) so yeah I just love that I just love being surprised by what we can do I think that's why I do it 48 hours is obviously a a, a great excuse to make a film every year Mm -hmm. do you manage to make other films outside of 48 hours in 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 like the grand scheme of things I would I would say yes in practice not really um I I want to and like I mean that's that's my my vocation basically as well i do i do a lot of like blog stuff more than like I, like from since 2014 i got real into doing blogs and reviews and and like examining pop culture more than writing my own stories and i think i'm better at that across the board than i am at writing like fiction but i like writing fiction more it's just i don't do it as much and it's a lot harder <laughs> i think that's key <laughs> yeah everyone should go over to facebook and join like the page cult popcher mm-hmm I always want to say pop culture. <laughs> Everyone does. Yeah, Although now, now um, some people say cult culture when they when they mean pop culture now, and I feel like that's a good mark that I put on on my social circles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, it's like it's like when people say they're going to Google something. I'm basically Google at this point. You know? Created brand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking to a newbie team how would you recommend they approach the weekend um i would say practice beforehand get get some friends together come up with some random elements and give them to each other and see see how fast you can write something that you like i would say like as an extension of that whoever your writer is make sure they're currently writing Mm. not just writing once a year for 48 hours make sure they even if they're not putting anything out they're still practicing their craft because writing is a, a muscle and and i think if you yeah if you don't have that you'll get to friday and you'll have this genre and you won't know what to do with it because you don't you haven't been exercising that muscle i i, I probably wouldn't recommend getting 20 people on a team i'd recommend getting getting um <laughs> enough people to to fall back on if you need if you need locations or actors or whatever um i would say make a comedy as much as i think 40 the 48 hours like people in charge want more dramas comedy is is real it's not easier but it's it comes to you faster like it, it, it it's second nature to it to amateur filmmakers uh, yeah i guess i guess that that venn diagram i was talking about before like try and include adventure humor and heart like well I mean, it's not necessarily humor but like because if you get a horror make it scary that's what mm. that's what humor is in, in horror language it's fear so make it uh, uh, like engaging put them put people on a journey and if you can it's not as important or imperative but if you can put like a little emotional through line in there as well and people resonate with that mm. I think the greatest thing is having resources you can pull on Mm. and knowing about those resources way in advance. I think, yeah, we always sort of put it to the group ages before it starts saying, you know, start thinking about what you've got, what do you have access to, who are you going to call on, all that kind of stuff. I think that's probably the most important because some of the stuff that we needed this year, I don't think we could have pulled it together if we hadn't already known that those were options to us. Have a smaller core team, it just can very easily become quite overwhelming when you've got so many people to to take care of I think know what everybody's going to be in charge of be prepared to have fun with it don't take it too seriously I think you know it's good to have a goal and to be focused but I think you do have to have fun with it and if it becomes too too stressful for you then I don't really see Mm, yeah I don't really see what the point is if you're not having fun with it so which I know a few people in my life who have stopped doing it for that Mm. very reason well and just to finish up if you could change one thing about 48 hours, 
Mm-hmm. What would it be? Uh, put it back up to seven minutes oh, instead of five you. minutes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> In my opinion, and like our Western storytelling compasses, seven minutes is a very natural amount of time to tell a story because you've basically got two minutes each for beginning, middle, and end with another minute in mm. there for pacing. Initially, when, when we first made a time and a place, my first, like, the big thing that I blamed its failure on was because I had to make it five minutes. But Bourbon Legends was about five minutes. Yeah, but it didn't have to be. Like I didn't have it. I didn't have it hanging over my mind. You know, <laughs> like with with a time and a place, I was like, shit, I've got to make this five minutes. Mm-hmm. Like da da da, and that was all I was thinking. It ended up being like three minutes. So like people say a minute per page, that's not true. No. no. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. certainly for us, we we did ultra, so we had to make a sequel. Mm-hmm. Doing a sequel on five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It shows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I never I never struggle with seven minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I struggle with five. To be, to be fair, uh, just to play the, the devil's advocate, I think bad films are measurably improved by reducing their length by two minutes. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. There's some of them and, still feel like ten minutes. Yeah, <laughs> and the judges do have to watch those as well. <laughs> yeah. But no, I'm with you. I think seven minutes is ideal. Mm. Yeah, agreed. That's a wrap for the Christchurch season of the 48 Hours podcast. Next episode, we'll be jumping to Wellington, where Team Squint Eastwood will be interviewing Temple of Solitude. For more information on 48 Hours, head to the website 48hours.co.nz or jump on the Facebook page.